Tell me when to tell them what's going on. Facebook and YouTube. Mm -hmm. Where's YouTube? I want to thank you all for tuning in tonight for a sister love talk. We have a theme song in Sisters for Sisters that I want to share it with you. tonight for joining us on our sisters love talk this is just it's refreshing to see like-spirited sisters come together these are community leaders advocates domestic violence truth seekers and speakers who are coming on tonight to talk about how we can impact our community what do we need to do to eradicate prevent domestic violence as you all know we're on an upswing of cases since the pandemic. Um, and certainly we know everybody that is presented tonight is doing this work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. October is every month for us, every day. So I want to first of all commend you all and thank you all so much for being on tonight. Uh, we want to do something special for each of you because I know the work is hard. So we're going to treat you to a little light lunch virtually. Um, but I want to thank you all again for your courage, resilience, and dedication, because this is not a pretty work. This is not easy. So tonight we have special guests on, and they're going to introduce themselves. Um, we have Sister Yolanda um, from the Pennsylvania area, and we have Sister Rita from Los Angeles, April from the DMV, Christine and Dorothea and my, my sister on the bottom and I can't see, but they're all from various parts of the country. And we're all just gonna collectively share our story. And then we're certainly gonna talk about how you as a, a village mother or village father, how you can be a part of the solution and not just flipping the channels and saying, oh, this is so sad. It's so sad. We need you to help us to save our sisters. Our first tonight, because she's going out to continue to do this work to heal from trauma, is Sister April. April, thank you for being on tonight. Uh, we're just really pleased. I wanted you, if you can, take a moment to tell us a little bit about your story. And then, uh, of course, however the spirit leads, but the ultimate goal is to find out what can the community do to help you do what you do. Sister April. Hi, Caroline, I just want to say thank you um, to you and, and, and to give you a round of applause for all that you do for the community. Um, I've worked with uh, Sister Carolyn for years um, with Sister for Sister, so I'm, I'm not new to Sister for Sister or to Carolyn. And so um, my hat goes off to you, ma'am, because you have been doing this for 20 plus years and everything that you do helps the community. It helps another sister, it helps another brother. And so we need more. What the community can do is provide more women like you, um, Carolyn, um, to do what you're doing, to bring awareness. Again, like you said, not just in October, but 24 hours, seven days a week. It's not just in October for, for I believe, any of us, but it's every day, it's all day. Um, 
My name is April Chambers. I am the CEO and founder of Angels Haven. And um, I'm an advocate, but I was once a victim. So I don't consider myself a survivor anymore. I'm a conqueror. I conquered domestic mm -hmm. violence. And um, I've been out 19 years. Um, I was in it for 15 years, believe it or not. Um, I thought I could just love the hell out of this man, literally. And I, I probably thought at that point, because I didn't know Jesus like I know him now, I probably thought I was his God and that I could fix everything and that, I, that you know, it was going to get better and, you know, the, the yelling was going to stop. And it didn't. And it started out with just him punching a wall and him pushing me and so and calling me everything but the child of God. And so I thought that was OK. And it wasn't OK. And so after years of verbal and emotional abuse, and we all know uh, domestic violence is not just physical. Everybody looks at it and say, oh, it's a punch in the eye or it's a black eye or it's a slap. No, it's, 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 it's uh, verbal, it's emotional, it's financial. And now they got this thing called um, cyber abuse where they can track you on your phone and track you on your, uh, uh, your social media. They can find out where you are. Not even just what, I mean, they have tracking devices now. And so they can stalk you and you know, harassing and stalking is, is a lot that's not talked about. Bullying, um, even at school, that's that's domestic violence. And so I'm, I'm here because I'm tired. I'm sick and tired. I'm tired of every time I turn on the news that there's something else going on. And it didn't just start with the pandemic. This epidemic has been going on long before COVID. And, and now, and, and just like Black Lives Matter, uh, the police, that, that brutality has been going on long before iPhones and it being recorded. And so domestic violence has been going on since the beginning of time. And no, the community and, and the government and churches, and I, and I think we'll get into that a little later, is not doing enough. And so when I got out um, a little over 19 years ago, there was no sister for sister where it may have been. I just didn't know about you. And I think that's the number one problem that people who are experiencing domestic violence and suffering in silence don't know how to get to help. Right. What, what if you're not computer savvy and you, you can't Google, right? What if they took your phone and you, you can't go online and, and, and look it up? Where are the resources, right? How, how I didn't know where to go. So I didn't go nowhere. I stayed. I didn't have the money. I didn't, I didn't have resources. I didn't know what to do, where to go and how to do it. So that, that was my reason for staying. It wasn't just because, well, I, I, one, I was afraid, but two, I figured I was by myself. And so I lived in this, in this, in this hell hole, I'll say, for 15 years, not knowing that there was an escape, that there was an out, as the cliche. So I didn't know that there was a light at the end of the tunnel. But I had a pastor um, at the time that had zero tolerance for domestic violence. And I walked in one day and they got tired of seeing me in shades. Every time I walked in, they pulled the shades down and the, my shades and said, you know, they put the shade up at that point and wanted to know what is going on. And so that's where it began. It, it, it started in, in my church at that time. Um, my, that, that pastor has now moved on to a different um, state, but my pastor at that time had a, had a zero tolerance for for domestic violence. And so I was able to get the help. But what about those who, who don't who don't belong to a church or don't belong to an organization that can give you the information? How do we get that information to the community? You know, I, I stayed because I didn't know, I, I, I didn't know where to go. I, I felt like I had nowhere to go. I felt alone. I felt like there was nobody to help me. And so if I had known Sister Carolyn back then, I could have reached out to her, whether it be at a pay phone, because I didn't have no cell phone back then, I would have got to her. But again, how can we get that information out versus if, if it's no social media? What if they don't have access to that? Where is it that somebody can go and that the community knows can say, hey, I can do this. I can go here. I can call Sister Rita. I can so call Sister Dor Dor uh, Robinson's um, uh, organization. Where where is the information at? And so my story is is some is somebody's different story. But for me, I, I suffered. I mean, I, I suffered, and I mean, and it was mostly physical, but it was definitely emotional and and verbal. And people say sticks and stones may break your bones. Words don't hurt. Oh, they do. They do. Sometimes that verbal abuse sticks longer than the physical, because that physical is going to heal at some point. But that emotional and verbal abuse. That lasts way longer 
than, than the scratch or the bruise or all of the above. And so that, that's a little bit about my story. Um, we, need, we need more help. We need more support groups. And I don't know if it's okay for me to say, but I do offer a support group the last Saturday um, at six o'clock on Zoom. We need to have a safe place where men and women can come to because men are being abused. They just not talking about it because they're men. Men are being abused. And there needs to be more safe places for us openly as a group to be able to share and talk about and also give resources and say, hey, sis, I got you. Hey, sis, what you need? She might need a place to stay. She might need some clothes. She may have, like when I left, the only thing I took was everything I could fit in my Ford es Escort. I don't know if y'all remember how small a Ford Escort, but it was me, two children, and a Ford Escort. And I, I, whatever I could fit in that back seat along with my children is what I left with. I left with nothing. But you know what I left? I left with my life. I left with my children's life. And that was more important than stuff. But people need things when they, when they, when they, when they walk out, when they get that courage, they need things. And, and the community needs to be able to say, hey, come here, go there. You can do this. And I'm a living witness, and I praise God that I'm a living witness, that I'm here to tell the story because there's so many that wasn't. I have a girlfriend who was stalked. He drove her to North Carolina, put her in the trunk, and set the car on fire. She had a nine-month-old baby girl. So domestic violence is real. It has happened to me. It, it, it has killed people. And if we don't do something now, it's going to kill even more. And that's how serious this is. And I really appreciate you sharing that truth. You talked about something that I really want folks to listen to. Um, we are recording this, and I'm sure someone may like to know. Tell us about what you do, April. Tell us about um the training you do because that's very needed and i think you you were talking about the church and the schools tell us about your training that you offer uh, i'm gonna turn around real quick and grab this book <laughs> okay okay because my class is actually at 7 30 but they know i have a, a co-facilitator so she's she's um she she's gonna be filling in for me so we actually teach a class and this is the let me look at my calendar this is the fourth week it's actually a six weeks training and it's mm -hmm. called healing the wounds of trauma right mm -hmm. so this is a it's a it's a six weeks class uh hour and a half every wednesday night is the night we hold it but we offer this free y'all right. hear me free f-r-e-e -E, free the only mm -hmm. thing the church or the organization has to do or even the participant is, is purchase the book. And if, if purchasing the book is an issue, we'll PDF it and send it. But this is a book and it's based on trauma. My thing is, if, if we, we as survivors, if we don't heal the emotional trauma of what we've gone through, mm -hmm. then all we did was get out. Mm -hmm. Right? We, we, we didn't heal emotionally. We didn't heal uh, so we can be able to be healthy, strong women for our children, for our jobs, for our, our sisters. It, it, we need to learn how to heal from the emotional wounds of the trauma, our heart. Because some that's not taught. Everybody says, get out. But then what do you do when you get out? Mm -hmm. You know, the community isn't talking about, let's go to counseling getting in a class to, to learn self-healing, to get your self-esteem back, to get your life back. What do you do when you get out? So you just get out, then what? You haven't healed. You got to heal from the inside out. And, and books, the, this class teaches, uh, I'll just give a couple. Um, how, how can we help the children? How do we take your pain to the cross? How to forgive? talk about addictions. It talks about looking ahead. It talks about um, why do we go through trauma? Why do we suffer? And it is, and yes, it is biblical. So, so this one, this one is biblical, but again, there are areas in the book for those. We don't want this. We don't want to turn anybody away who's not churchy, so to speak. So there is, there is areas in the book where it's not um, 
mandatory that they read the scriptures is not mandatory. Of course, for me, that's what helped me, it, Jesus. That, that's what helped me, my relationship with him, me having a close relationship and prayer um, it, it helped me so much. But I didn't have classes like this to teach me how to heal from my heart trauma. Because mm -hmm. when you get out of domestic violence, you're dealing with not just the, the wounds of it. I have plenty of scars I could show y'all that, that hasn't healed. But that emotional trauma, that, 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 that trauma, that mental trauma, that self-esteem, that has to build, be built back up. And classes like this, support groups, those would help you build your self-esteem so that you can be functioned and that you're not just, what I, what I was doing y'all for, before I got into counseling and reading self-help books, I, I was just living. I'm sorry, I was just existing. I wasn't living. I was just existing. Mm -hmm. I was walking around with so much hurt, shame and guilt, mm -hmm. blaming myself for, for, you know, staying and not knowing what lo real love looked like. I mm -hmm. didn't understand what that was, mm -hmm. but classes like this, so it's one of the classes is what is love? What does it look like? Mm -hmm. And so these are some of the things that when we get out of domestic violence, we need, we have to be taught that a lot of things are learned behavior. We have to unlearn everything that we were taught or that was done to us because mm -hmm. we'll go into another relationship. When I first got out, I was always argumentative when I dated, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 my, my male friends would go, why, why are you so, why you always wanna argue? Because that's what I dealt with for 15 years. I didn't know how to communicate. Mm -hmm. I was looking for the next shoe to drop. I was mm -hmm. so addicted to the adrenaline of trauma and drama. I didn't know how to function in a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what that looked like. And these are some of the things that have to be taught. It, at school, in churches, in our communities, at different organizations. If you don't have that, how do you know how to go into a new relationship without bringing that baggage? We got to unpack that baggage and it's like an onion. We got to peel it back one layer at a time. And we as women, we need that. We need a safe place. We need each other. We need to know how to, 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 to be fearfully and wonderfully made. Some of us like me, was, I, I thought my, my name was B-I-T-C-H. I didn't even know I had a name. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what fearfully and wonderfully made what is. Ladies, we queens. If mm -hmm. our daddy is a king and that's King Jesus, then we got to balance our crown, mm -hmm. right? We, we're royalty. Mm -hmm. Purple, we, we wear purple in, in, as, as a sign of domestic violence, a symbol, right? But purple is also royalty. Mm -hmm. So we have to learn women who have been abused, men who have been abused. We have to learn how to bounce our crowns back. So, so they shifted. Okay. We got to bounce them back because we are more than, we're more than a conqueror. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. So we have to start feeling like not just putting on a mask. We got to take that mask off and really feel loved mm -hmm. and know, and, and know how to be able to give love back. We don't know how to give it because we never received it. So how do you learn how to love? How do you learn how to receive love? Where are we getting that at? Are we getting it in church? Are we getting it in the schools? Who's teaching it? Especially if you don't know it. And if you was in domestic violence like I was for 15 plus years, how do I know what love is? Just because you said it? That's words. That's, That's words, true. Carolyn. Mm -hmm. You're right, April. I'm telling you, I know your scholars are really learning a lot because you are really blessing tonight. I really appreciate you taking time out. And again, how can we reach you? Because I know you're running to class. Tell our listeners how they can connect with you for your, your nonprofit. If you could just share that contact information. Real, real easy. Angelshaven.com is angels, A-N-G-E-L-S. Haven, H-A-V, it's at Victor, I-N-N, dot com. Uh, that's also angels underscore Haven on Instagram. And then in the group section on Facebook is Angels Haven. Same, same spelling. Um, so you can inbox me on Instagram. Uh, was it I am on, look, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not a millennial. I'm old school. <laughs> I am on Facebook. <laughs> uh, I think it's DM on Instagram. And you can um, email me through the website. Also, I would love if you want to reach out, volunteer, 
just uh, want to chat. Uh, or be a part of the support group, tell your story. I, I, I have different survivors um, on every last Saturday. So if you want to share your story or come on and just listen in, it's the, mm -hmm. the last Saturday of each month, which is next Saturday at six o'clock on Zoom. Ladies, y'all come on in and, and join me, join me. I'm going to stay on until about 7.30-ish because okay. uh, my co-facilitator, uh, she, she got it and I told her what I was okay. doing. So I don't want to miss some of these other beautiful ladies that's on. Well, honey, I know they're phenomenal, but one thing you said to me is about knowing that we're fearfully and wonderfully made, knowing that we are the daughter of the king. And in order for us to proceed, we always got to start with a prayer. And Sister Rita Hall, uh, my girl, all the way from Los Angeles and co-labor, I would love for you to lead us in prayer. I know it's, you know, not quite in the flow, but one thing I want to tell you all in this season, there will be disruptions. And you have got to flow with the Holy Spirit whenever, however, you need to do it. So, Sister Rita, can you pray for us? Heavenly Father, we invite you in this evening. We can do anything without you. You are our everything. You give us the ideas that we come up with. And Lord, you know, we have been pleading and asking, show us what we can do to make it better for your other daughters. It's pastime, God. Every day, there's some new victim that has been either beaten to a pulp and or murdered. And they come from all walks of life, all ethnicities, religions, socioeconomic statuses. And they have been beaten down emotionally, as Sister April said so beautifully. So Lord, come in here, expand our minds, expand our thought processes, give us resources, send them from the north, south, east, and west. Father God, because we need resources. So Lord, I'm thanking you in advance. We have laid this on your altar and I'm holding you to your word. You deliver in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Sister Rita Hall. Uh, Sister Rita is our special guest speaker for our upcoming Silent Tears No More Prayer Breakfast, which will be hosted on October 30th, virtually the 16th annual. So we thank God for you. I love you so much. I want to have Sister Yolanda take us up to the Philadelphia area. And I want you to introduce our um, young ladies, our sisters that's rocking and doing some great things. Sister Dorothea, we got couple other sisters here I want you to introduce them as they come along because my eyes are not working as well as they used to oh, Lord hallelujah so we're gonna um ask that you begin um to take us up north if you will a little bit Sister all Yolanda, right. yes all right so first of all I am so glad to be here um but Carolyn before I go can you, because these, they don't know you. So a, a lot of these, they don't know you. They don't know what you do. So can you tell us about you real quick? Yeah, I can. You know what? I'm glad you said that. I had a meeting today with some really powerful and dynamic women. They're probably on YouTube looking for us. We're not there right now, but we will later. Okay, my name is Carolyn White Washington, and I am the founder of Sisters for Sisters Incorporated. And we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization that was founded um, in 1999, right out of my home in the suburbs of Washington, DC. Um, and we founded it because there were a lot of my sister friends that were experiencing various life trials and tribulations and we just needed a safe space to share and soar. So we started here and in the process of doing that, we later um, started doing a lot of community outreach work, helping families. And one of the things we noticed year one, a young lady was a part and came out to our meetings was that she was being abused and she had silent tissue, she had a big high paying job, she was very successful, but nonetheless, domestic violence doesn't care how much you make, 
how gorgeous you are, how big your house is and how fine your husband is, he can still be an abuser. And I want to say this as a footnote, Sisters for Sisters recognizes um, women that are abused. We know that one out of seven men are abused and we definitely respect and honor them. We're going to have a men's discussion on next Wednesday, the 27th. However, we concentrate on women because that's what we're called to, that's our assignment. Um, it's not that we dismiss men or don't love men, because honey, we love some men, at least I do. Um, <laughs> but I address women because that's what I'm called to discuss. Um, so our organization has several different signature services. We do domestic violence awareness and prevention work, HIV AIDS. We have a group called SOS, Saving Our Sisters from HIV. We have Daughters of Destiny, our mentoring program for young girls. We have as well um, the Harriet Tubman Shelter Project for Women, where we go in the cities and we work with homeless women and we provide them with hope and clothing and things that they need to get back on their feet. We also have a project called Pathways to Possibilities that helps women in transition with um, resumes and other kinds of services to help them um, navigate their way and get on path with peer mentoring and things of that nature. And I think I'm missing one, but our goal is to see women win. We don't have any time for competition. We have time for collaboration and connection so we can make the change the world is waiting to see. And that's who we are. We wanna take women from trial and trauma to triumph and new beginnings. So um, we are an organization that has a heart and we, we really want to share because we know that everything we do is about unity in our world. And that's the one thing missing. We're also disconnected and we want to know why it's so hard, why it's so difficult. So tonight, you know, although I want to hear stories, the main thing I want to get to solutions. I want to figure out what can we do to get toiletries or books or journals or volunteers or whatever we need. We need to get services right now, you know? And so that's who we are. I'm the proud mother of two beautiful children that keep me on my knees praying. And I thank God I could not do what I do without people like Sister April and Rita and Yolanda and Angelia. I, it's no way that we could do this on our own. You know, people are often like coming to me and my office is a wreck, but you can't see all these awards. They're not mine. They're everybody who's on this call who continues to show up and help me to do what we do. We do it together. So that's who I am. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Right. Sister Yolanda, she is a firecracker. And I love <laughs> women with passion. As you can see, April was ready to give us a sermonette. Rita didn't give us a long prayer like I know she can give up. And then Yolanda, if I say something about domestic violence, she's like, what are we doing? Let's go right now. We're going to make it happen. And those are the kind of sisters I want to connect with because they got the fire. So that's what's up. That's what's up, y'all. We got we to gotta have a passion. You know, we got to pursue the passion uh, together for purpose. And I thank God for you all. Yolanda, I thank you, girl. I thank you for stepping up. Let the church say amen when we did that and you went into the past in Philly. Thank you so much because we talk about the church. And this sister was like, let me let me go see my pastor. And I guess they saw her coming. was like, oh, Lord, we're going to have to do whatever she's coming with. Because <laughs> she's <laughs> persistent and I love that. And then handbags, I hope, across America. She was a Philadelphia, Pennsylvania ambassador. And I'm just grateful to you, girl. And I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, my name is Yolanda Jennings, and um, I am a uh, survivor. Um, and uh, I also, but the main reason why that I do domestic violence awareness is because um, my sister, uh, my only biological sister was murdered in 2004 in Los Angeles, um, in uh, Inglewood, California, actually. Um, and uh, she was stabbed to death by her fiance. And then just in 2019, my cousin was uh, shot um, multiple times, eight times by her kid's father. 
And so it, it, this is this is personal for me. And um, I had made a, I made a commitment when my sister passed that I would do uh, whatever I could to uh, try to help save somebody else that I couldn't save my sister. I couldn't save my cousin. And um, but I pray that I could help save somebody else. Um, and so I am, uh, I'm a certified domestic violence advocate. I'm currently on the board of directors of an organization called Purple House Project PA, uh, for which Christine uh, Brunson um, is the uh, founder and executive director. Um, and we are in, um, in the Philadelphia, Delaware County area. And um, we, um, we are doing, we, we trying to do, we trying to right, right now, well, Christine will talk more about it, but right now what we're trying to do is get, uh, raise money so that we can get a building so we can get transitional housing. Um, because one of the most frustrating things is that we constantly get these calls and then we have no place for people to go. Um, and, and that is extremely, extremely, um, frustrating um and so um that is you know i so i've been doing it i've been doing domestic violence awareness for the past 10 years um regular i mean constantly and it's just it's it's my passion and whatever i can do wherever i can go i say i feel like i'm a per, i'm a connector that's my that's my that's one of my gifts is connecting and connecting people and connecting people with together and so i'm so glad to have um my good friend dorothea robinson um she is the exit strategist um and she's here from philadelphia uh, as i said we have christine brunson founder of purple house project from um from philadelphia in a Delaware County. And then I also invited, um, I think she my cousin. We have met on Facebook. She is from Mississippi. And her name is Tanisha Bankston. And uh, she's a phenomenal young lady. Uh, she got an awesome testimony. And um, and I wanted her to get on here so she could connect her because she's doing some awesome things. And so that's me in a nutshell. When and basically, that's what I want to do. I want us to be able to connect so that we had talked about this before, uh, Dorothy and I, we, ha we had talked about, you know, Dorothy, because that's one of Dorothea's things is about us being able to uh, connect people because it might be somebody I got in Philadelphia, they need to go somewhere else. And so maybe they could go to Maryland or DC or whatever. So that's where we at. That's where I'm at. You muted, uh, Carolyn. You're on mute, Carolyn. Carolyn. Okay. Okay. Yes, I just wanted to let you all know one of our sisters. Uh, we want to keep her in prayer, Angelina. Um, there's some shootings going on in the area where she is right now, and she is definitely a game changer. So I'm asking you all to keep whatever that matter is in prayer. Um, she's in Washington D.C. Um, and there is an increase in crime, as we all know, um, going on around the country. So she's in the middle of a shooting incident as we speak. That's why we're here. So we can remedy because the street violence that we're all seeing is starting right in the house. It's spilling out from the house to the street. And so I just want to thank you, Yolanda. I just love hearing you talk. You're so, you have such an excitement with you, even as we talk about this very horrific incident of violence. Uh, we got Sister Dorothea and everyone else. I may not know you all by name, but I, Sister Dorothea, the Advocate um, Academy, talk to me about that. What, what is it? I, I want to know more. Thank you so much for having me. The Advocates Academy was developed and created because as we all are speaking and will continue to speak of what we're finding in our walk and our path, is that there's not enough resources. Right. We don't have resources, even right where we are. I'm from Philadelphia, very, very animated. 
Um, that's just who I am. So please forgive me. I don't want to offend anybody with my clapping of my hands and me getting a little bit loud because I'm passionate. There's mm -hmm. no absolute, no reason why I live in Philadelphia. Yolanda lives in Philadelphia. April, do you live in Philly? There's no reason in Philadelphia where we have a major, a major, huge organization. And every time I make a phone call because I have somebody in my car with her trash bag and her two kids and her pet, if she has one, see, I go into the homes. Mm -hmm. I, I walk into the homes and I get them and I get them out, get us get in the car, let's go. So, and you know, I'm playing in the devil great playground. We all are, but I am the one that goes to the home. I, I, I make those stops. And, but when I make a phone call, and each and every time I call with maybe different clients and I've helped over hundreds of women, mm -hmm. there's no room in the inn. Mm -hmm. See, there's only 200 beds in the city of Philadelphia for women, specifically women who've been abused. That's a disgrace. Mm -hmm. In this metropolis of a city, it is an absolute disgrace. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, those who have had the honor and pleasure to be in the place where I'm able to get them to safety, I have had to transport them, get them out of Philadelphia, out of Pennsylvania at times to another state to get safe. Now, in the essence of things, that's okay in some instances that they're further away from their abuser. But however, on that initial call, when there's an immediate need, there's no room in the end. Oh. The point about the Advocates Academy is this, and just as Yolanda um, alluded to is this, I totally believe, super believe, that I know I can't do this by myself. Mm -hmm. Christine, you can't. Miss Rita, you can't. April, you can't. None of us can mm -hmm. do this by ourselves. And the work is heavy. Mm -hmm. And the work is hard. And the work is very, very rewarding because in my mind, not one more butterfly will have to be absolutely inundated by the abuse anymore. Like there should be a place in Philadelphia that I know that I can call or two or three places that I know that I can call, but it's not that way. It is difficult where I live in order to get them to safety. Now, on the hindsight of that, the Advocates Academy was developed because I believe just as we're connecting now, we link arm and arm together. The resources that I have, I'm going to share with you. So if April calls and says, I need somebody here. Oh, I know somebody in Texas. You need, you need, you need a place in Texas? I, go, I absolutely believe that if we connect across our cities, our states, this country, the world, in a network of advocates that we can go to one place and say, you know what? There's a registry of somebody that I possibly need assistance in, in Los Angeles. Oh, somebody needs help in Alaska. I have had the pleasure, the honor of helping someone on several occasions move from a country to the United States. When I tell you that beat, how oh, hard God. that was. And I'm talking about international issues and I'm talking about getting out from customs and all of that, getting someone safe in a different country, I need to know that I can put my hands on a liaison, another advocate right where they are in order to get that victim to safety. It is a sin, an absolute sin in the way that our country treats and deals with domestic violence intimate partner abuse, we can go on with sex trafficking. And let's be honest, let's be clear, it's a big money business. This is a big money business. When we go to courts and we stand and we march and we do all of the things to make our, the noise that we should and raise our voices to the, to the elevation that we should, we're heard, but the ball is dropped. Because if I can't get a client, just temporary shelter in a safe place, because see, the first thing they said, well, they can go to a regular shelter. Well, 
If you want to know reasons why a woman or a victim of abuse stays, and I deal with women, so please forgive me, I say women, and yes, men are abused as well, not forgetting that. But when I make the, the decision, she makes the decision. So I'm leaving an abusive situation to go to a place where there's no background checks on any of the people there. All types of people are there. They're worried about their children. And we live in Philly straight up. It's like a war zone. So versus my kid will have lights, food. My kid will have all of the things that they need. So I'll just stay to take the abuse because I won't have to subject my kids to the unknown of a regular shelter. It is a sin before the most heavenly father that a woman, when she says I need help and the help that's offered is not what they need. We need to get into these companies. I am marching in boldly. Uh, Yolanda know me, loud mouth. Go into the pharmacies in your area. Go into some of these, these businesses and ask them, what are your protocols and how do you make your employees safe? What do you have written in your, in your handbook when it comes to your employer, employee having issues regarding domestic violence, what do you do? Do you take a stance or no? How about this? If you find your employees having issues with domestic violence, what resources do you have? Do you send them to HR and is HR able to help? We need to know these things because guess what? I believe that that can help as well. If these organizations and these companies, you know, these big conglomerates, just make sure that they have what they need in place when, a, you know, their employee says, I need help, they should be able to help. I'm passionate about what I do, just like everybody else, right here. And I believe that we can bite this elephant in its behind if we do it together if we make enough noise, pull our resources together. And on the last note, this ain't free. Getting a victim to safety is not free. I know for a fact, and I speak probably and join you all when I say I reach in my pocket, bus fare, gas, dog food if she has her dog, diapers, all of those things, they cost money. When a victim usually leaves, she's leaving. If she is not prepared and prepared that bag and, and you know get coaching on what to do, that's what I do. I get in the mindset and I get them ready. Here we go. We out on this date that we've, you've selected. It takes money. It takes money in order to make sure that she has the essentials. It takes money for transportation. It takes money to have snacks if she's got a car to keep the kids satisfied. She needs food for a highway drive. It takes money. So for those of you who are listening and I'm so glad that I, and I'm looking on Facebook and I'm just honored to see my people, my community, they know who I am and I'm so glad to get connected to each and every one of you. This needs to be shared because there's somebody out there who's making the decision to stay because she doesn't or he doesn't have help. Somebody out there is listening who's made the decision to go but don't know what to do or where to go, right where they are in their city. There's somebody out there watching who is a survivor in April, I'm so with you and I'm so glad that you said it, is you get out, you should not be just surviving and existing. Your life is more than that. You don't have to do any of what we do. We do what we do because this is the calling. It's in our blood. It's in ourselves. It's we, this is not fun. Again, we playing on purpose on the devil's playground, right? We say we're going to play. Well, I'm going in there and I'm going to go get that victim out of the sand and I'm bringing her with me, right? We've agreed. We signed up for this. 
but everybody who gets out and who's a survivor does not have to give back the way we do. Find purpose, get somebody to talk to, because as April has said, you have brought some baggage with you and you don't even know all of your triggers until your trigger happens. Won't discuss that, but share this, not because of any one of us up here, because we like to see our beautiful faces shared amongst your social media platforms. I'm asking you to share this because this right here, this discussion will save a life. Yes. I know that it will. Every, every opportunity that I've had to be able to speak, somebody's reached back. I bet you all of us will get a DM. It will save a life. So you do your part right now. And if you can please share this out. And if you already shared this out, thank you. So again, I want to thank you. You know, um, this is amazing. My, move on to the next because I can go on all day. Thank you. This is awesome. Thank you so much. You have passion. We're giving you a hand. Let's give up. I thank you so much, Dorothea, for sharing. You talked about transitional housing, not enough resources. A Philly has 200 beds in the city, but they also have major banks in Philadelphia, major headquarters of banks that have tons and tons of foreclosed houses that can actually give you a house. They're not doing that. The Bank of America and Wells Fargo, I understand, were supposed to be giving away houses. So the thing is, one can send a thousand to fly to 10,000. And if we all just continue to have this collective conversation and they see the power and the advocacy of us together. Although I recognize breast cancer awareness and it's very important and dear to my heart. Certainly I like to see domestic violence be on that same page that people still acknowledge the women, men and children impacted by this horrible and deadly crisis. And together we can bring up that message. So I wanna thank you for sharing and I have this on the list. Uh, if someone is listening from the Philadelphia area and they wanna know, what can I do for you, Dorothea? What would that be tonight? What would that, um, I, I am not great with, I, 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 well, I know my lane. So being in a courtroom, being, in you know the politics of things that's not my forte it's not because i'm gonna get in trouble and none of y'all have enough bail money for me you know what i'm saying <laughs> that's my mouth i'm sorry what i want people to do as far as help is to know the definition of domestic violence. Um, side note, in my opinion, many agree with me, narcissism is domestic violence. Narcissism has a hot topic. But what I need and would love for people to do, non-advocates, is to be aware of your existence and your relationships. Know that Standing in your relationship, if it's toxic, does affect your children. But get in front of your reps, your councilmen, and make phone calls. Get on their nerves. Present them with your findings and your information and the things that you or hearing or changes that you want, stand up. It's been, you know, for those of us who've been, in, I don't know if I told you, I've been, I am a survivor, no longer a survivor, but however, um, my, with my ex, <clears throat> since we were 16, 30 years of domestic violence, uh, left mm, five years, little did I know that he was sexually abusing our boys, uh, some of our children. So the longer you stay in, the greater risk that you have of dying yourself. 
or it affects your children greatly. Get in front of your reps, your city reps, get information, connect with any one of us. And what it is that you hear tonight, please pass it on. I, I really need the, our politicians really to do better and they do have the power. The lobbyists, you know, they have the power and we just need to spread the word and really make changes on the steps of the Capitol. So make some noise in that regard because it will save a life. Things have to be changed. And I don't know, support your local shelter. They can always use diapers for their kids. They can always use, you know, gently use clothes. Find out where your shelters are in your area, support them. You have an extra hundred dollars, Listen, nonprofits send it their way. They can use it. See if you can volunteer sometimes to take the pressure off because it's not an easy job. Get involved the best way that you know how, but understand that domestic violence means you too. Because if it's not affecting you directly, it's affecting someone in your home. And I'm in here. You go to church. You sit on the, the benches or chairs, whatever. And in your row, you have four women, or you might have eight women. If you have eight women, that means two of those women right then, right now, sitting on those pews are in a domestic violence relationship. I use that analogy so you can get and you can understand that it's sitting right next to you and you may never know. Because we, as, to, as victims, and you listen, we were all great makeup artists, right? You know, you know how to put that makeup on to do this and hide this and that. But the reality is someone is dying and is sitting right next to you. And you may not even know. So the next time you're in a crowded place, count off all of the women divided by four. That's how many women are in abusive relationships. You want to count the men. Count off seven, one of them is being an abuse in, 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 in a horrible situation. So I give you that so that you can take that and call your city reps, your councilman, your mayor, make some noise, be the voice of the voiceless. Thank you so much. That was powerful and some great advice. We will be putting that together so folks can listen and share. That's great. Along with that, I want to also um, challenge you to reach every jurisdiction is different, but definitely whoever deals with domestic violence as it relates to law enforcement in your town, whether it's the office of the sheriff or whether it is um, the police department, reach out to them as well to find out what they have, because some of the resources are going directly to them and you could actually use that on your day-to-day -day work and mission. So reach out to them and see how you all can collaborate as well. So Carolyn, can, Carolyn, can I just, I wanna, um, I'm gonna jump off real quick. Um, sure. Mr. Ms. Dorothea, you were excellent. And I just wanna piggyback off what you said. Everything you said, I, I second it, third it and, and all of the above. But uh, for April and Angels Haven, exactly what Ms. Dor Dorothea said, get, get in front of your representatives. Mm -hmm. All these organizations, we need money. We need money to be able to help and support not only the victims, but for us to continue to help the victims. We need to be able to have gas. We need to be able to have uh, resources to give them hands on, not no cash app. We're talking about cash because they might not even have a phone. Mm -hmm. And they might not can't get to their bank account because mm -hmm. their bank account is called financial abuse. They that person or that abuser has taken over their money. So we need to be able to give them cash in hand and or gift cards. We don't always have to have cash. Donate a gift card. Money, cash, and the schools. If we can get in front of the Board of Education, let's get in front of the Board of Education along with our representatives so that these children can be taught what a healthy relationship is so they can understand what domestic violence is. Bad touching. They don't understand that these, some of these teachers are touching our children. 
That's where this sex trafficking is starting, is at school. But if these teachers, are, if the children are not educated, how are they going to know? Pastors, mm -hmm. pastors, pastors, get in front of your congregation. It is just not about breast cancer in October. It is just not about um, uh, tithing. Let's teach healthy relationships, <laughs> boundaries. Let's teach what domestic violence is. Like Ms. Dothea said, can we start defining what it is? Can you put that across the media? Can some of these celebrities talk about domestic violence versus twerking? So I, I got to jump off and get to class. But Carolyn, again, thank you. We, oh. we need we need everything. <laughs> yes, well, love we you guys. love you too. Bye. We as um, advocates, we're going to have meetings on a regular basis yes. so that we can flush out and we can really be a support for one another. Sister Rita has been on that. We talked about law enforcement. Sister Rita Hall has been on a number of different um, assignments in her former role, but I want to commend her. Surround yourself, ladies, with people who have a vision greater than yours. And Sisters for Sisters was doing this handbags project and we had, was picking up about 150, 200 handbags. And Sister Rita spoke to me and said, I think we should do it across the country. And I was like, well, what should you talk about? I didn't really see it, but I thank God for her vision. I thank God for her tenacity and I thank God for her guidance and helping this project lead to almost about 20,000 handbags. We have distributed filled with supplies and toiletries for shelters and for others across the country. And Rita can take a lot of credit, um, really bringing on her team and helping make it happen. Rita, thank you for all you do and thank you for your vision. Tell us about the law enforcement side, some of the things you've seen and how we can move forward. Well, most importantly, sure, because we have a few people to go. Um, what are the resources? What is it that we need that can help, um, help us to help others? And what can the community do primarily? How can they help? Okay, I told you earlier that uh, I don't want anybody taking what I say and holding it against you because I'm tired. I'm really tired and I'm going to be very unorthodox and I'm really beginning to think outside of the box. Okay. Right here. Every woman on here is really, really dynamic. I've listened to your passion and you're good. But as good as we women are, we need men to step up and tell other men you don't batter. When men start telling men, that's a punk move you putting your hands on a woman. See, when a man challenges them, they, they're not going to say anything and they're not going to hit them because they're one-on-one -on -one with them. If we say something, we're likely to become a victim. So my thing is we need to collaborate with the males. We have fraternities that need to step up. They can teach when they're doing pledging because for those of you on here that are in a sorority, you know pledging is tough, but they can put a component in there what teaches them real men don't hit women. Okay, now, uh, Sister April earlier, she was stepping all over what I wanted to say. She said it begins in the school. We need for our children to know, number one, what good touching is, and number two, what is unacceptable behavior when it comes to battering, putting your hands on people. When daddy hits mommy or mommy hits daddy, that is not right. And we got to call it what it is. Now, I know some people out there are going to get very angry with me with the next statement, but God's okay with me. He made me bold, so I'm just going to put it out there. My firm belief is the reason that a lot of churches don't talk about domestic violence because we got some pastors beating their wives. Now, people are not going to want to say it, not going to want to hear it, but I'm calling you out. I can't tell you the number of pastors that I went to when Carolyn came up with that phenomenal idea of one Sunday in October from your pulpit, speak out about domestic violence. Well, I don't know what happened in Philly. I don't know what happened in Maryland, but I'm telling you, 
I had to search high and low in Los Angeles to get a brother that was bold enough to talk about it. And oh, did actually I got two and they spoke out about it. And the reason the first one spoke out is because his mother was a victim of domestic violence. He couldn't do anything about it when he was a boy, but he said when he became a man, he was going to stop me. And he spoke from his pulpit. All right. Coaches, you got these football players, you have these basketball players on your, on your teams. Talk to those boys about, no, you don't hit a girl because one of the fastest growing segments of domestic violence is with our young women. The 15 to 24 year olds, they see all this twerking and you know these rap songs where they calling us the biatches and the hoes and this. No, 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 no. You don't disrespect us like that. Where are the boys and the men that are men that are gonna step up and say, hey partner, uh-uh. They got sisters, even if they don't have sisters. I tell you one thing, every man had. He had a mother and a grandmother. Now, would you want some punk walking up to your mama, slapping your mama or your granny? No. Well, the one you hitting on is somebody's daughter. She may even be somebody's mother, but it's time. Okay. One of the other things is my vision and God gave me this vision. I may not be here, but it is going to come to pass. I'm speaking this into existence. We're all saying that we don't have the resources within our specific cities, but we got an NBA team, an NFL team. We got all of those. We need to get to those athletes and tell them every city where you play, we need to have shelters there because you making buku money off of us. Now, I think just from watching things that he's done, LeBron James would be a good candidate because he created that school in Cleveland because he promised those kids a college education. There are others out there. We need to get to them and present our project to them and say, we need some safe houses because there are too many women dying. Carolyn sent me earlier today, and I can't think of her name right now. Carolyn, maybe you know. There was a beautiful Black bank executive in Los Angeles. Her co-worker, who was her boyfriend, killed her. Her face was so destroyed by the beating he gave her, they had to identify her by her dental and the clothing she had on. I didn't, I didn't tell you that part, Carolyn. But what I'm saying is we, people, the common public has this preconceived notion that it's the lower socioeconomic, uh, less intelligent women that are victims. There are CEOs that are getting beat. I told you, I firmly believe that there are first ladies that are getting beat. But when you put your title above your safety, that doesn't work for me. You know, I am not going to be anywhere that I am not respected, appreciated, and protected. Now, Carolyn, I have never even shared this story with you. I had, the reason I'm so passionate about domestic violence, I had two cousins that killed their husbands because they were beaten. And it always scared me, what would I do if I was in that situation? Well, I did have a guy who put a gun to my head, a shotgun, and told me if he couldn't have me, nobody could. I ran out of that boy's house. That was like 40 years ago. That boy ain't seen me since. Cause see, you only got to give me one inclination that you crazy. I don't play with crazy. Which brings me to my next point. We need mental health counseling in the black community. As black people, we have to get over that counseling is taboo or a sign of weakness. No, that's a sign that you on the road to recovery when you recognize that you need help because the problem is bigger than you. And so we have got to get beyond, you know, our barriers that hold us back. But like I said, if we get to NFL, you know, back NBA, all of them, and then there also, I think it was Miss Dorothy that said about going to corporations. 
They got buku money. Let's hold them accountable. Make them pour into. So if we get sports teams and big corporations and Bezo, if he can go up in the air a couple of times just on seeking, you know, oh, I can because I can, then he can build some domestic violence shelters. Or if he doesn't want to do that, he can fund some diapers ain't cheap. Water, uh, baby formula, not cheap. We need some, some shelters that are specifically for victims of domestic violence. So like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm really passionate about this. We need to get those people on board to help us do what we need to do. I'm done. Honey, those are some great ideas. Bravo to you. I love every last one of them. Rita, tell us how you came to this. Tell us about your work experience. Okay. Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I am a retired uh, first responder. I took those battered reports. I took those murder reports. I was the first one on the scene. I saw the trauma that happened to the female, but I saw the kids cowering in the corner from fear. They couldn't do anything, begging mommy, daddy not to hit mommy again. I used to go to this, real quick, I used to go to this one house every payday weekend and I'd get there and she'd be all beat up. And so I asked her, why didn't she leave? And she says, ma'am, I don't have, much of an education. She says he puts food on the table, he keeps the lights on, and my, my children have clothes to go to school. So if that means I have to take an occasional butt whipping, so be it. But one day we went there and shocked, he was all lumped up. So I'm like, what happened? What happened? She said her son, 12 years old, grabbed her da his daddy because he said, please don't hit mommy no more. And that fool made the mistake of hitting her son. Now I'm not a mom, but I know what uh, mama bears can do when you hit that daddy. <laughs> do you hear me? She <laughs> tore him out because he hit her child. And that's why one of my cousins killed her husband. He hit her child and she told her children, get to grandma's, get to grandma's. And her son didn't want to leave it. She says, I said, get to grandma's. As they was running, they heard pop, 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 pop. She lit him up. Wow. It shouldn't have to come to that. But like I said, I'm the radical one. I teach self-defense to women. I teach women how to have something everywhere around their house that if they get hemmed up, they can reach for something and back him up. So I'm a little radical, slightly kind of violent sometimes, but I believe in protecting yourself. Rita's been in law enforcement, retired from law enforcement with the sheriff's office 30 years, right? Am I right? I've been, I've been retired 15. I was with them for 26. 26, yeah. So she knows and she has that passion, as you can tell. For those that are tuning in, we are definitely telling you to protect yourself and be safe. Don't make any rational decisions. Don't pack up and leave tonight. You need to have a safety plan. That's the most dangerous time. Rita mentioned something that's very critical that one of our participants is really well knowledgeable of, and she has a way with the folks. People follow her, but she believes in that counseling and therapy and that dinner talk conversation that's none other than Queen Afi. Gaston. Queen of Fee, are you with us? I see your pretty face. Hey, hello, yeah. my dear. Love everybody. Peace and love. I am here with, of course, Blake. Hey, Miss Blake. <laughs> <laughs> She's growing to be so pretty. She's pretty like a mama. Yes, yeah, she is. She I'm is. reading the book. And really? How to read. <laughs> Lord, oh, how to read. Jesus, well, help me. Please come down off the throne, honey. Yeah, I know how to read this one. Okay, Blake. Okay, Blake. Let me talk. Um, 
Yeah, sis, we want everybody to say some amazing things tonight. I know, they really have. But you know, you can share a part of your story because I think people need to know it's real, real. And all, although we know you, everybody doesn't know your story, but if you can tell a, a short version of the story, because we want to get our other sisters on, but also I want to know what can we do as a village to help you do what you call to do? I got, I'm writing down what everybody's saying because it's mm-hmm. my wish list. Because um, mm-hmm. we want to fill some of these needs. We want to. Yeah figure out how we can uh, navigate. I want to find out, somebody said something about diapers. I know Mm -hmm. we have a a diaper uh, location here. Do they have the same one in Philly? Can we connect you all to that? How do we work? We got to start utilizing our connections to connect one another to the resources. So Queen, you share wherever you want to go and share, um, and then definitely give me your wish list. And most importantly, how can we make the difference? I mean, what are some of the things we need to make the difference? Yeah, um, Queen of Feet, the founder of Domestic Violence Where's Many Takes organization, founded the organization in 2008. Um, the purpose of the organization was to um, re, you know, research out there three, four specific things. One, um, who was having the conversation with men or males that are victims of domestic violence. Research out there, nobody's having that conversation. Two, who is educating abusers? Women, men, teens, boys and girls, because they play a huge part in getting a handle on this cycle and ending this cycle. Um, Number three, I wanted to um, talk about the many tags of domestic violence, not just physical abuse, because That's not the, normally that's not the first place where the abuser will get you and keep you in that relationship. So we want to educate on verbal abuse, emotional abuse, financial abuse, sexual abuse, and physical abuse. We want to educate on all five of these tags being um, the entity to help victims and abusers break the cycle. Um, Because research showed that many abusers are victims first. So victim turn abuser all the time. That's in women and in men and in teen boys and girls. Um, and then lastly, uh, education, um, uh, the educational resource piece, which is nicknamed the school for domestic violence, where actually we can go into the school system and have what we do be a class, you know, be a part of the orientation when our young people are coming into college or um, be a part of, a, you know, ministry groups where, they take their career day or their educational day and they have that domestic violence education piece um, included with that. Shelters where you are literally um, getting book knowledge and language and understanding the backdrop, not just um, that pamphlet that they give you and tell you to go over that. But we give you um, a classroom perspective of what you're going through in those many tags. Um, And me having this conversation alone seven years in the conversation, um, you know, getting people in a loop with the many tags of domestic violence on July 30th, 2016, my daughter was shot in the head by her baby father. So um, I didn't, my daughter didn't get killed and then I started the organization. I was out there doing the work and my daughter got killed. Um, and she is one of the reasons why I still continue to talk because um, what she pushed me to do for her community of young people, 19 years old, uh, was to have this conversation with them, be transparent with them, allow them a space where young men can get their own sessions, their own classes about relationships and what it is to be um, a victim of domestic violence or what it is to be in a healthy relationship. So I'm not coming in the school system only talking to your girls. I want to have a classroom full of boys because our young men don't know how to treat no girlfriend because we're not teaching them how. Amen. We, put all the, we put all the focus on girls, 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 girls. And some of these girls are just as valid as the young men are. And they talk to me. They resonate with my story as I was the victim and the abuser. So they resonate with me and they tell me, Queen, I got off the bus and I smacked him and I smacked her. 
we have our young girls who need to be taught what the healthy relationship piece entity is. But we must have our young men start learning what it takes for them to exit a domestic violence relationship too. And it's not just walk away. Whatever she do to you, just walk away. No, uh-uh. The brain don't work like that. It don't process like that. So we got to get better at getting our young men to this dinner table and having a conversation. I feel like if somebody had been educating my daughter's murderer, my daughter could be alive right now. Had somebody would have been educating this young man on domestic violence, on what healthy relationships look like, what that's supposed to do, what the communication is supposed to be like. My daughter could potentially be alive right now. But because he had no inkling of what a healthy relationship is, you know that domestic violence can drive you to kill somebody, my child is dead. She knew because she, she, she followed me around the city doing the work. But he didn't know anything about domestic violence or being in a healthy relationship. Okay. And then lastly, I'm going to close out with this. My daughter was murdered. I had an event to do for the young men. I have the young men come on the panel and share their stories being victims of domestic violence. I'm doing, I'm in my fifth year doing this panel. I get to the church to go and do the panel within six hours of my daughter being murdered. So that I never canceled the event. Once they brought the baby back to me from CPS, I said, I'm going to the event. As long as I can get my baby here and know that she's safe, I'm going to go to the event. Took my tail over to the event. Handful of people knew my daughter was murdered, but not a lot of people knew that she was murdered just six hours ago. When I told them this after I finished the whole event, you could hear a pin drop in there. They couldn't believe I was standing there, still talking about this conversation, still talking to the men, encouraging our men to stand up and say, I'm a victim of domestic violence. You didn't educate me on what a healthy relationship is. You didn't teach me how to be in a healthy relationship. And so um, at the end of the event, of course, everybody was sympathetic to me, but I feel like you know, God wanted that event to go on. I feel like the creator said, and my daughter said, if there's ever a time that we need to talk about this, this is now. And that event happened centered around men. Men, okay, which tells me that I need to go even harder with getting our young men educated about domestic violence and healthy relationships, encouraging our young men to work on their mental health and get their trauma resolved. That God had me do that for them on that day. My daughter was sacrificed for that. So um, Sister Carolyn, you know, we gonna keep on pushing because that's what we do in the city. We keep it moving. And um, we, 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 I continue to have a conversation. My support is that, you know, um, on the back end, I'm lobbying you know, for men to be included in these laws, for our males to become, because we got sons. Ain't no way in the world you want some woman beating up on your son and spitting on him and calling him everything under the rooftop that you didn't name that young man. You don't want it to happen to your daughter and you don't want it to happen to your son. Mm -hmm. And some woman stabbing him and, and killing him, taking him away from his children. Domestic violence don't care who you are. It don't care about your gender. Everybody at that dinner table is affected. We got to get back to that dinner table and start educating everybody, grandma, grandpa, on down, because elderly abuse is a serious issue too mm -hmm. in these households and, and in some of these caretaking places where we got our elderly mothers and fathers living in. We got to, it, it's bigger than just women being victims of domestic violence, but I get it. Women will call and all the resources will go to women. And that's respectable. That's understood. I was a victim myself. I get it. But we leaving out a whole lot of entities at our dinner tables when we talking about this conversation. Mm -hmm. Everybody in research is showing that everybody is affected and it's getting so bad that the wound, the child in the womb can be affected by domestic violence 
at these dinner tables. We got to do better. We got to do better at educating them. Some people say, Queen, how old should I start? Educating my child on good touch, bad touch. Five years old. Mm -hmm. Five years old, that baby should know. Start learning his or her body parts. Mm -hmm. Not nan nan poo poo wah wah wee wee. That's not what we need them to know. So we got to do better at our dinner tables. That's what I want. That's on my wish list. We got to whip out the words. We got to start this conversation at our dinner table. Mm -hmm. We got to do advocacy right at our dinner table. Mm -hmm. You can send them to me all day long, but it ain't nothing like mom and daddy and my friends and my family, all of us coming together to have this type of conversation. And trust me, the children, they, they into it. Right. The people, they want to talk about this. Mm -hmm. They want you to bring this kind of conversation to them. Mm -hmm. So we get, that's my wish that we do better at our dinner tables. Thank you so much for letting me share. Well, I'm glad you did. Let's give her a hand. She is courageous and that's her baby daughter, grandbaby. Look like her real baby, her daughter's baby. Uh, I will never forget the morning that you called me and you was like, sis, should I go on? I was like, absolutely. Um, absolutely. And she courageously went out there and rocked the whole house. The men were sharing their heart. Queen, that's your um, gift is the men. So we need to pray for a group of men and others that will support you and rally around that are called to serve men. Because sadly, the men are now, I, I hate to stereotype or generalize, but I've got like four cases of young men right here in the area that have killed their mothers recently. Young men are killing their mothers. There is an issue. And I'm sure you can get to the heart of that. That's a serious conversation. Next week on the 27th, men will speak about domestic violence. We've been doing this for a couple of years. And we have a man who is a survivor, whose wife, he was highly educated, very professional, but his wife was abusing him. So he's going to be on next week. You all can view, but it's only going to be men invited to this panel. Um, thank you so much. What else do you need? What's on your wish list that we, and I know we're going to have to talk at the dinner table, but what else is it that you're getting calls for? Yeah. Um, one of the things that I wanted um, to happen, which is actually happening in D.C., I don't know about other states, I believe some things should be going on in other states, too, where um, domestic violence, you know, is really a secret for victims and abusers. But it's victims that are reaching out are able to go on the computer now and get their, you know, protective custody orders and file things through the computer, speak to the judge through the, so that it's treated more like a secret. Can you hear me? I didn't uh, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, so that it's treated more like a secret. I'm really loving this. Okay. Um, a lot of calls with, you know, helping um, sisters go on and do their protective orders, where to go, what else resources are out there. Um, the thing that we can do is make sure that we're up on our resources, making sure that the 1-800-799-SAFE number is aware of our resources. Because when we direct them to the number, uh, the resources that they give us are not caring. Right. You know, so how can we make sure on the back end that when we direct people to the 1-800-799-SAFE number, that the resources in their states are caring resources, mm -hmm. right? That's mm -hmm. one of the things that I'd like to see happen because one of the things we don't want to do is toss victims around and keep tossing them around. And like we're doing it. And we're doing it. Yeah, they'll give up and go back to the abuse. Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to stop that and make sure that all of the resources are caring in our state. I really would like to see that amped up a lot. Um, and as far as the safe houses go, I know the safe houses are good, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing about the safe houses is I, I would like to see them contracted with actual, actual police mm -hmm. patrol, okay? Because the abuser can, can just stroll up in a safe house and kill the victim. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and, and trust me, the abuser know where all the safe houses are. Okay, so that ain't running away and escaping to a safe house. 
just let's get some police presence there okay. for me because um that will help to deter a potential murder um happening at a safe house and you know our children there the other thing with safe houses that you have have some safe houses that will not take male children i'm supposed to be running for my life but my child you tell me my son cannot come in the safe house with me are you crazy i'm going to run with all of my children i'm and so woman, you said that this Safety woman has, that. this woman can have all males this woman can have all male children think they son and you telling me that my sons cannot come in the shelter with me. Well, what's well, what shelter take some take take boys then? Now she gotta run all the way around town to try to figure out which shelter would take her and her sons. Mm -hmm. You know, that's inappropriate. It's inappropriate for um, you know, um I thought they took them up to 16 though. They don't no. no. 14, 13 in some places. Yes. Yeah. So you Dorothea, want... you're experiencing that as well. Uh, every call. Wow, help us. So she has to make the decision, just like Queen said, who's on fire. What do I do? My son, shelter, car, street. I want us to stay connected you all and share some resources and information uh, because this is this is not the easiest job, especially in this season. Queen, as always, you've left us wanting more from everybody. Um, I appreciate you. I treasure who you are to me. Uh, she's our love, uh, leave our violence everyday cares honoree for 2020. Uh, but she continues to do this work nonstop and been doing it. We've been doing this work when it wasn't popular. People was looking at us around here like we were crazy. And they still do. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't stop because we're not going to. So I you appreciate the company. They looked at Jesus like he was crazy. Y yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. I think we have Yolanda. Do we have another sister on with us? Queen, I want you to send me a wish list for Blake, please, for Christmas. Um, if you don't mind. Thank you. Um, um okay. yeah, we oh all right. So we have Tanisha. Christine had to jump off because she had to go do supervision with one of our okay. interns. So okay. when she, when Tanisha get done, I'll I'll go ahead and say what Christine would have would have probably said. Okay, that'll be good because we're closing okay. now because I know you all are ready to do what you do. Okay, hi, how are you doing? To, is it Tanisha? Tanisha, are you on? We're glad to have you. I hope you can hear me. We got a couple of minutes. I really want to hear your hear your um, feedback in terms of what we can do. Is, can she hear me? Sweetie, unmute yourself. You might be muted, dear. Let me see. She was saying she, she was having trouble because uh, she was in the car. I don't know where she at, but... Um, Christine had to jump off. Tell so us let me, about I'll Christine. Just, yeah, so Christine is the uh, founder of Pro Purpose Project PA. Um, okay. And um, we, our mission is to strengthen, empower, and transition women who have been impacted by um, intimate partner violence through collaboration um, with um other organizations. Um, we just recently did uh, our fifth annual um, My Purple Path Walk. And the main, the main thing, thank you. One of the main things that we both, it, that we both wanted was to bring as many organizations and, um, and resources together in one place so that people would be able to know where they can go. And we were able to collaborate with some other people who are doing domestic violence. Um, Cause a lot of times we got this thing, you know, especially as, as women, a lot of times we want to do our own thing. And, and this is not that, okay. This is not that. This is all about collaborating together. Mm -hmm. uh, currently Purple House Project um, has a, community garden at a women's shelter 
And so what we're doing, we, uh, we started this community garden so that we would be able to uh, teach the women, you know, how to garden, teach them how to be able to make some things of their own, and then be able to, our, our, our goal is to help them be able to sell and make money and, and, and be able to be self-sufficient and learning how to be self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do some programming. We um, have connected with Enterprise, um, car rental, where they'll be helping us, you know, with trans with transportation. We have um, connected with a mortgage company, and this mortgage company is going to be helping these women who want to uh, who get out and want to go ahead and buy their own home. That we've connected with them to help them do that. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately, our goal is to purchase a building so that we can provide. Um, uh, transitional housing, mm -hmm. as well as holistic services. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, with the therapy piece, you know, would it be, whether it be yoga, whether, whatever it is, we want to put that, we want to have it all under one roof um, so that we can be able to provide that. Um, and currently we, we have two fundraisers going on. Uh, we've con uh, collaborated with a publishing company called, called Cobbs Creek Publishing. Um, and she has um, offered to give money, a portion of her book sales um, to us. Also, we are partnered with a wine company called One Hope Wine. And this mm -hmm. particular wine company, that's what they do. They do, they do these fundraisers for nonprofit organizations mm -hmm. and to help these organizations specifically for that. Um, and um, so that's what we're doing. We, what we want to see is more collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, we want to be able to, because you talked about the men piece and, mm -hmm. and I have a son that just uh, got out of an abusive relationship uh, with his wife and he finally you know, after four years of craziness, um, he finally was, has been able to say, you know, he done, you know, and, um, and so I totally agree with the whole men piece. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, we had at our walk, we had a gentleman there who um, his daughter had been murdered. Mm -hmm. And his story was just like, it, it was really, it was really powerful. Um, and so I totally agree about the, getting these men to talk about their abuse. That was something I was planning on doing prior to the pandemic. And that's something that I want to follow up with and having a panel of men to talk mm -hmm. about these things. I know that here in Philadelphia, there is an organization. It used to be called Menergy, but it's called Cordrea or something like that, okay. where they do, yeah. yeah, and where they do counseling and all that kind of stuff for uh, the abusers mm -hmm. and I feel like we need to have more of that um, mm -hmm. because we need to stop them it, we got to get the men to understand about abuse and how they came to it because a lot of these men have watched it in their home mm -hmm. they've been an abused in their home as children and all this kind of stuff so um, I totally agree with everything that was said and that's what Purple House Project, that's what we are trying to do right now. Purple Hearts Project. I love the name, Purple Hearts Project. That's a Purple great House Purple Project. Purple House Project. Okay, I yes. like that too. Yes. I could see a Purple House, but the thing is we'd have to keep it on the DL because we wouldn't want everybody to know what we're doing. Right. Yeah, we got, yeah, I hear, I like that. I like Purple House. I like that. Well, I tell you what, you all have a fantastic mission. I love the work you all are doing. Congratulations. Tell Christine, I, I really thank her for joining us. I'm sorry that we didn't get to her uh, before she had to leave, but I appreciate her presence. We are about three minutes over, but I want to talk to Sister Tarnisha. Are you on? Is she her? still there? Let me see. Are you there? I want to thank you all because this has been a lively conversation. I've gotten a lot of information and I hope we will continue to meet at least bi-monthly or quarterly so we can 
connect the dots. I don't believe God brought us together for no reason. For those that are in the community, I want you to reach out to these organizations. We're going to put the information in the chat, but most people aren't on chat. So if you all can share how folks can get in touch with you and support, because Sister Dorothea, you could use some gas cards or maybe some you know, underwear, or maybe some bags of toiletries. I don't know. And exactly, you know, Purple House, I don't know what you all need. And Sister Rita, I don't know if you're going to do handbags in Los Angeles. But if there's, I'd like for you all to just share, what can people give you that's tangible right now? And how could they reach you quickly, Rita? Um, Holy Helping Hands. Holy Helping Hands is kind of like during the pandemic because it fluctuates out here in Los Angeles. You can go somewhere and be in a group, you can't. So we didn't do uh, handbags of hope this year. However, as you and I have discussed, there are handbags in my garage and in my house because people still donate it. Um, if anybody has a contact, because I'm urgently serious about this, with getting me before either the NBA, the NFL, the American Baseball Association, because I'm passionate about it. And because I have a law enforcement background, I think I could get to them. I could even take them down on a trip to the morgue after a weekend of domestic violence. Because, you know, people are visual once they see it. Because, you know, when they hear it, it's abstract. But when they physically see these broken bodies, I'm serious. I really want <clears throat> domestic violence shelters in every city where there's a major league team and for them to contact some of you beautiful ladies on this line and provide you with the resources, diapers, formula, uh, gas cards, food cards, whatever is necessary. And we're going to have to collaborate and work together because I heard some really wonderful things out of Philly that's not implemented here. And here is a good place to share ideas and get programs extended across the nation. I agree. All Thank right, you. Tanisha is there. Tanisha? Tanisha, can you hear us? Hello, you know oh, yes, hey, can you hear okay. me? I apologize, I had to take a call. That was my son, I had to take that call. No worries, no worries. We're just going around the room now and just sharing what kind of resources um, you need and you know, we didn't meet you, but we're glad that you're on. Do you have like a maybe one minute or two minutes to share? And then let us know how can we help you do what you're assigned to do as it relates to domestic violence. Okay, yes, ma'am. My name is Tanisha Bankston and I'm from Grenada, Mississippi. And like Yolanda said, I believe we are cousins. We have the same last name. You know how people say, hey, cuz, with that same last name. And um, I'm a mother of three. I'm a survivor of rape, incest, childhood, sexual abuse, trauma, and domestic violence. And I broke silence last year about my life story and everything. And I've been um, raising awareness and advocating. I just moved away from Grenada to another location. And I like the fact that they have um, different resources and organizations where I live now in Oxford, Mississippi. And I'm looking to get involved with some of these organizations because right now I'm doing everything on my own. I do a lot of speaking and sharing my testimony and just raising awareness like that. I even got my nails done. I'm supporting domestic <laughs> violence awareness. And so they're pretty. Thank you. And I'm just, you know, I've been writing everything down as well. Like um, just listening and just, taking in all the information that I can to, um, I'm new to this and I'm a survivor and I want to help others like myself. Amen. I love, I love your, your youthfulness and I want a close up of those nails. So you got to take a picture of okay, it. Okay. Yeah, I will. And so I will. I can, Cause tomorrow we all rock in purple for the, the purple awareness day. And so I definitely want to see how we, Bro, I'm going to let you all know right now in advance, y'all better not say she wore that yesterday because this is going to be my purple <laughs> outfit for tomorrow. You know how y'all do when y'all go to clubs or the church? you be like, did she have a, did she have a dress on last Sunday? I know I saw her with that dress on and she wearing it. Don't y'all even think about it. 
So I'm going to use that picture for tomorrow. So don't get all cute on me, y'all. It's so nice meeting you, sweetheart. How can someone help you down in Mississippi with your project and your assignment? Is there anything in, in you know, that you have in mind that you would say, you know, I really need, what would that be? Just more resources and, you know, just have ways to get more involved with domestic violence and getting, you know, out there in the community and in schools. Okay. Okay. Uh, what about your, oh, I'm sorry, what about your book, Tanisha? Oh, yes. I forgot. Um, I just wrote a book about my life story. It, um, and it's called My Pain is My Power. And um, so many people have read it and they've been coming forward and breaking their silence. And I just thank God for allowing me to, you know, be the voice for the voiceless and and use my voice and just be empowering and inspiring to others. And that's what I pray to God for. And I just thank him for that. My Amen. pain is my power. Well, well I thank I you, Yolanda. It's on Amazon.com, or you can order from my website, MyPainIsMyPower.com. I love the title. Congratulations. Definitely order it from her page. That way, there's no middleman. Yes, because Amazon is taking a big chunk, a big portion. Yeah. But they, they won't be taking under my money, because I'm going to www.MyPainIsMyPower.com, and I'll yes, be clicking there. Thank you. Thank well, you. Thank you. We're looking forward to us continuing the conversation. We want to find out as well, Dorothea, we're going to close up. What can we do for you? What is it tangible that we can ask the community? Um, so again, um, I often reach into my pockets. I, I, I'm not a waiting sister. When I get a phone call, okay, here we are. And if the plan is made and things will fall short. So you know, I, I never ask. I never ask. People get on me about this all the time and I've got viewers to say the same, yeah, I don't ask for money. But the idea of gift cards for food to McDonald's or, well, but but at this point, we're, we, need, we need food. So we may not have the choice to pick and choose whatever is available is available and be grateful. So, so it's the gas cards, it's, you know, diapers, Walmart, you know, is, is, is a really great place because you can get just about anything there. So those types of things would be great. Um, I wanted to say real quick, um, Sister Rita, um, have you heard of nomore.org? No, I haven't. Nomore.org? Okay. Nomore.org. Okay, please forgive me, but I'm just passing information. Mm -hmm. It was established by the NFL. As we know, for those of us who are advocates, from Thanksgiving all the way to the Super Bowl, domestic violent rates go through the roof. Yes, they do. Okay. It's so, actually Super Bowl Sunday. Right. So I'm a little bit upset because you only see a commercial one time a year, and that's not even during Super Bowl. I would really like to know what they're doing. The football players that abuse the, their wives, that they part. provide help lawyers and all that. I'm not even gonna get into mm -hmm. discussion, but no more.org. The other place that I, 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 I'm just thinking bells are going off. You have all of these purses, you have many pocketbooks. Well, we in Philly call them pocketbooks, but there where you are, you say purse. You have a lot of purse. Connect with tennis star, superstar, Serena Williams. She has an organization that's called Purple Purse, where the organization she's created specifically helps with those who have suffered through financial abuse. Now, I'm just thinking, you got all these purse, all of these bags, and then there's Serena Williams, who has, who has an organization. Okay, you do the math, you got the information, rock with it. Um, you know, let me just can, can I interject real quick? Actually, purple that purple purse, uh, that thing that's, that's part of all state. Uh huh. And Serena Williams was actually she was the spokesperson, but that's right. through all state. I'll say absolutely. Um, but I'm thinking you put the two together, that might. 
I got you, my sister. Like stuff, they may stuff some stuff some of those bags you got. Thank you. Oh no, thank you. I'm glad you said that. Thank you for all you do. So yeah, in 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 the scheme of things, those types of things cards to to these different places so that they can go ahead and get the things and I can just hand them off I don't well, mind. if if I wanted to send some cards to you where would I send them um you can go into my well my here's my email my email is there is life after dv d is in and david and b is in victor at gmail.com yes life after dv and in the chat, I put my, my cell phone number, my contact number, and I'm all on all social media as L-A-D-V coach. That's um, being an acronym for life after domestic violence, L-A-D-V coach on all social media. And in this chat here, my, my phone number is in the chat. So I thank you for this opportunity. And again, Ew. somebody's going to hear in their DM that they got saved from something. I promise you. I you believe will, that. You will come back, sis, with that testimony. I'm waiting. I'm excited. I am as well. And I want to thank you all for hanging in there with us. I know we've gone over a little, but we can't go without Sister Yolanda telling us before we close, what can we do for you ladies? What is it that yes. you talk to us? Well, like I said, we got those uh, two fundraisers going. Um, the one, Hope Wine. Um, you can go on our page, uh, on our social media, facebook.com. It's at Purple House Project, PA. And then on Instagram, we're at Purple House Project. And I put the I put a link in the chats to our um, our website. Okay, I may need you to inbox this to me via Facebook. No problem. Okay. Well, on behalf of Sisters for Sisters, I want to invite everyone to come out this Saturday. We're doing the Domestic Violence Love Walk, which we do annually at 9 a.m. at Fairwood Park Community Park in Bowie. So if you're in the area, stop on by at 9 a.m. We'll be there probably until about 10, um, 15. Come on out and take a walk against domestic violence. And then on next Wednesday, we will be having men speak. These are men who will come on about eight to talk about the experience as abusers and those that have been abused. And um, we just invite you to tune in and listen in on that. And then next Saturday, we have Sister Rita. Rita's going to be speaking on the 30th of October for our 16th annual Silent Tears No More it's virtual domestic violence prayer breakfast. Tickets are on sale. You can visit our website at sistersforsisters.org um, to tune in and be a part of this fundraiser, which helps raise money so that when a woman is escaping or families in need, we can immediately provide them direct services. Um, other than that, October 31st, your girl going to have a birthday. So y'all keep me in prayer that I just keep going because you all know this job sometimes makes you a little weary and a little heavy. But when we all come together, oh my goodness, it feels so good. So those yeah. of you that are listening, you know, call in and help some of the nonprofits and the organizations that we've had on tonight. I thank you all so much for being a part of this discussion. And I look forward to us continuing. Yolanda, I'm looking at you to help manage our communications and keep us all together because that's what you're an expert in administrative excellence. And I want to thank everyone. Does anybody feel we need to pray before we go? Always. Mm -hmm. We always can use prayer. Amen. Anybody want to lead in particular, feel a, a pushing in the spirit? Ooh. Well, can't nobody pray like Rita. I this bet Miss Dorothy can. I can see it in I'll, her eyes. I'll, 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 I'll
feel that too, Reed. I'm with you. That's a prayer warrior. You know how they say, you know how they say game no game? Yeah. yeah. That's and, so powerful. And we 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 have to in and, and, exactly. and sandbox in which it is that we play. So Father, Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for these women here and others, Father, who seek to save your children. Yes. This is not about us. And you gave us this walk, you gave us this path so that we can go ahead and show the victim of abuse you and the power that lies within them, which is you. And Father, have them come to safety and the things that need to be provided, Father, the housing, the shelter, the money, whatever it is, and the things that we're not mentioning here yet on tonight, Father, we know that you are a provider. And so therefore, we trust in you and the walk that we walk, holding the hand of the victim to get to safety, but to ultimately give to you. So the work that it is that you've given us, it's in our heart and it's our blood and we bleed it, we breathe it. And we're thankful for it. It always doesn't always feel good, but we understand what it is that your son had to go through. His walk wasn't easy, but it had to be done in order to get to the end result, which is always you. So we thank you right now, Father, for our walk. And for those who may be thinking about following in the steps in which it is that we take to save victims of abuse. And we pray for them, for their healing, their strength and their heart. Father, you said you know us by our hearts. Read our hearts, Father. And we hope that we do you honor by the things that we do, the things that we say, where we go and who it is that we touch. So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this fearless leader who had the the tenacity, the wherewithal, the understanding that she had to have this one tonight. Bless her father from the top of her head to the soles of her feet and every woman who was here today. Bless them father above and beyond what it is that they could possibly think in order to get the work done that you have set for us. And we say thank you. Thank you, thank you for the lives that are saved tonight, father. We know that they are. We might not know exactly who it may have been, but we know a life was saved and we give you glory and we're grateful for it. So hallelujah unto your name. Father, we thank you for your son and we ask you all of these things through your precious son, Jesus' name. And we say amen and happiness and gladness and, and anticipation for the next move in which it is that you have us to go. Amen. 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 Told you, Carol. Told yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I tell you, you were right again. You were right again, Reed. I appreciate you. What a powerful prayer. Thank you to prayer warriors. I can't wait to see what God is going to do from this because together we can make a difference, one sister at a time. Thank you all. God bless you. Have a wonderful night and, and look out for a little something special from us. We love you all. Be blessed. Good night, everyone.